Hello, I'm John Shea and I'm one of the freelance music staff who regularly work for English Touring Opera. Uh, they've asked me to select one of the pieces in their autumn 2020 season of monodramas to read the text and uh, to say a few things about it. So I've chosen Tippett's cantata Boyhood's End, which he composed in 1943. And uh, as you can see, I've come out onto Wimbledon Common to record this because it feels as though change is in the air. Today may well be the last day of this late summer spell of fine weather, for one thing. And, well, that ties in quite well with the text that Tippett sets here. It expresses a young man's fear of what he may lose in the process of growing up, specifically in this case, his intense reaction to the natural world. Uh, Tippett's setting a piece of prose here, not a poem, although some of it is quite poetic. He took it from the autobiography of the naturalist William Henry Hudson, which was published in 1918, near the end of his life, and this is Hudson in his late 70s, recalling his feelings as a teenager some 60 years before. And I should tell you, by the way, that Hudson grew up in Argentina, which explains the time references to the coming of spring and the heat of high summer. So, here's part of the text, and it begins with Hudson, and by implication Tippett also, asking himself some direct questions. What then did I want? What did I ask to have? If the question had been put to me then, and if I'd been capable of expressing what was in me, I should have replied, I want only to keep what I have, to rise each morning and look out on the sky and the grassy dew-wet earth, from day to day, from year to year, to watch each June and July for spring, to feel the same old sweet surprise and delight at the appearance of each familiar flower, every newborn insect, every bird returned once more from the north, to lie on my back on the rust-brown grass in January, to gaze up at the wide, hot, whitey-blue sky, peopled with millions and myriads of glistening balls of thistledown, ever floating by, to gaze and gaze until they are to me living things, and I, in an ecstasy, am with them, floating in that immense, shining void. <laughs> 